Engine for Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer, and I'm here with the director and some of the cast of Jekyll and Hyde. Hi guys, how are you doing? Oh, Hello. Yeah, really well, good, thank you. Good. So you had a late show last night, how are you feeling this morning? Surprisingly good, actually. Yes. Yeah, Everybody's been very uh, well behaved so far this week, <laughs> so, um, which is rather good stuff. <laughs> So you're just settling at the moment, but it will come. Exactly. But how has your show been going so far? It's been really great. It's really great. We've been really lucky. We've had um, pretty much sold out audiences every wow. night. We've got a mean flyering team. <laughs> <laughs> but I think people know the story, so they're intrigued to see something which has a very different take on it, because uh, Jekyll and Hyde in our version is a woman rather than a man. So, so you, you played um, yeah. Jekyll and Hyde? And that's why I try to speak as low as possible. <laughs> Envisage me playing that part. <laughs> How is it playing um, those parts? Do you find it um, quite easy on stage to just swap between them? or? I do now, I mean, for, for other people to judge, come and see the show, but I think in rehearsals, um, each of the characters had their own individual journey, and we worked with movement directors as well, and, and stage fighting, and, um, and we... Um, we allowed for those journeys to go to, the, to their fullest, um, and now all I need to do is just maybe do the walk, kind of, or you know, just kind of go into the physicality of it before the show, mm -hmm. and the swap is much easier. But yeah, they took quite a while to find, and we explored with lots of different versions of them, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took um, us a little while to find. Um, now, well, I mean, for God's sake, apparently the mayor of New York has got 40, over 40 personalities, and there's, you know, <laughs> there are famous artists who've got over 100 personalities. If you want to look at it from that point of view, kind of the multiple disor um, identity disorder, which we don't, I mean, we're not uh, looking at that psychological background um, as thoroughly in, in the way we're portraying the story, but it was certainly something for me to yeah, research mm -hmm. when I looked into the part mm -hmm. and feel comfortable with. Of course. So it is such a well-known story. How have you revitalised it? What can we expect when we come and see the show? Well, it's um, it's a very new take on it, I'd say. It's not. It's no, by no means is it beholden to um, Stevenson's original. Mm -hmm. uh, as Christina just said, having a female Jekyll yeah. uh, becoming a male Hyde um, is quite an unusual kind of gender take on it, I think. And it really, I feel that that really makes it relevant in a feminist sense. <laughs> um, which, which is, yes, is, is, is quite is interesting. Um, well, come and see it and, and judge for yourselves. But um, we also have a beautiful library of score. It's very kind of uh, cabaret style version, um, and it's kind of funny and dark and silly and melodramatic and scary. I hope at some point. Um, and the music composed by a fantastic young composer called Lawrence Osborne. Mm -hmm. um, is really kind of extraordinary and it's, it's a really important part of how we tell the story. Um, so in that respect I'd say it's a brilliant late night show because um, it's not too sort of intellectually demanding, like it's kind of exciting and multi sensory and fun. Um, so it's, it's we're on a 10.45 p.m. slot so I think it's, yeah. it's really working. And the set as well, so the, the whole atmosphere has really helped, I mean it's quite a small room anyway yeah. um, and the whole Victoriana kind of aesthetic is really helped by probably the biggest set you'll see for a show of this scale by a wonderful Joe Scotcher uh, mm. who um, really plays with the, with the mood. Mm, absolutely, it was really important to us with all of the features of the show, I guess, to make it um, feel very analogue, very tactile, and very kind of Victoriana inspired in its yeah. technology, I guess. Um, so all of our lighting is built into the set, um, and there's no um, sound cues or anything, it's all live, um, all the sound effects are made by the performance as well. Um, so it's good fun in that respect. I think the audience feel very much a part of it. When you're sitting on the front row, as Christine said, it's a, it's a big object in um, a very small the beautiful kind of small pocket sized space at the Assembly Roxy. Um, it feels sort of faintly vertiginous because you sort of feel, almost feel like you're sitting in the room with the actors and it's a really exciting feeling and I hope that audiences derive a lot of pleasure from that. Really um, so you've got a month run, how do you prepare your actors um, for the show just before? Are there any rituals you go through? Uh, are you saying no drinking? Well, Def ritual. My yeah. ritual? Yeah. Well yeah. definitely no drinking except with water and lemon and ginger tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I guess because we've the, the three week rehearsal process was uh, intense enough and uh, fulfilling enough mm -hmm. that I think when we first came to Edinburgh there wasn't really a feeling that we 
were madly scrabbling to put the production together. Everyone was quite comfortable with it. So everyone's kind of just found, find their own way to uh, prepare for it. And I normally take myself off and listen to music <laughs> of a particular kind to get myself in the mood. None of which has any... Yes, dubstep! Um, <laughs> a lot of dubstep, a lot of gospel <laughs> Linda's music. character is really badass, so dubstep yeah. are so very far away. Yeah. <laughs> I've just got a wonderful Michael Edwards who plays Art of Stone, my love interest, who uh, has a very particular preparation as well. So yeah. He's a very focused actor, he's a wonderful actor, um, and he listens to classical music, blaring whilst he's putting on his makeup, his white makeup. Wow. With it's these huge earphones. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> they, all, they all wear sort of um, white face kind of uh, cabaret clown style makeup in it. Um, Which is actually part, I, I guess, um, yeah, in terms of getting into character, having this makeup on is a big part of it. Yeah, you put on your. Yeah, it really does like your, feel like you're painting your character mm -hmm. on. It slowly starts to emerge <laughs> in the mirror looking back at you. Um, that helps a lot. And, and wonderfully, although slightly more prosaically, as we're in Edinburgh, obviously the cast have to do their own turnaround getting the set in and out. So after they've done all this wonderful preparation, oh. the show before us comes down, and there's 15 minutes in which everybody just hurls themselves into the theatre with all the stuff, uh, puts it up, and then, and then we have to open. So that is. There's a lot of manly growling, isn't it? <laughs> all, all the men who are like over six foot can kind of like carry yes. the big flats. Yeah. I, I, I see some smaller props <laughs> and, and costumes. It's still an important role. Yes, <laughs> very vital. Absolutely. Well, great. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank Where you can you catch the listening. show? Um, it's 10.45 um, at the Assembly Rocks and Gangsters, um, and we're running until the 25th, but we have one day open on the 13th. Um, so, catch it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much for talking Thanks to me. I've been Imogen for Waffle TV.